Hello, fellow humans. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name's Jane, and thank you so much for clicking on today's video. Today, we are about to expose the shit out of your new upcoming YouTuber. One million subscribers in three months by our girl, Joanna Sadia. She's just your other YouTube-relatable teenager making comedy, skits, and content. Now, we're all sitting here scratching our heads as also fellow YouTubers thinking, how the fuck am I not blowing up? My content is just as great as Joanna's. I decided to go in and expose the strategies she used to blow her channel so you can too. All you gotta do if you wanna know how to blow up is keep on watching. Hey Jade, how did this person blow up? I have no fucking idea. Views, followers, and all that stuff. This is how they blew up. Which Jade don't walks up. If you're new to this channel, What's up? My name's Jade. Thank you so much for being here. I'm shaking your hand. Please extend your hand too. That's awkward. All right. I'm a 17 year old entrepreneur who helps you grow on social media. And basically, if you don't know, I made a video a few months ago called Exposing Emma Chamberlain and you guys seem to love it. You guys seem to just bond. The reason being, and I, I can understand, if you're someone who is a YouTuber and you're seeing so many other creators grow so fast and you're just like chilling on two subscribers, <laughs> that sucks. And I think it's just so demotivating to maybe not know how the YouTube algorithm works. My job is basically, you know, coaching brands and influencers how to grow, really just piece together what's happening to successful creators. And I think it's just so important today just to dive in not only just marketing techniques, but you know, things you can apply and step-by-step -step things you can take action to grow your channel too. So today I'm just gonna dive right in and kind of share the three things I found that blew up Joanna Sadia's YouTube channel. And we're about to dive right in. So the first thing and the biggest assumption I have that you guys actually assumed was the fact that Joanna is the new Emma Chamberlain. So Joanna posted a video called Copying Emma Chamberlain's Clothing Line. That video has over 4 million views. Now, when she posts that video, there's a couple things that make a YouTube video pop. Now, I know you're sitting in your chair like, what the fuck? I don't understand what you're saying, Jade. Please explain. In a lot of marketing, there's a lot of people searching a certain thing at a certain time. That's what search volume typically is. For example, if it's Halloween, people are gonna probably search for Halloween related things in the month of October. If you post something in November, no one's gonna search for it. So I would say if you're picking the right keywords at the right time, you will be able to search up. Now, what about the competition? So the thing is, if you are trying to make content that is pretty high volume, there's also gonna be a lot of people that are gonna probably do the same thing. The only way you're gonna beat someone in the race of the search volume keyword, for example, Halloween, is if you're the first one in Halloween. You have to like basically make a video a month before it actually starts. For example, with Emma Chamberlain, her clothing line dropped. And right when it dropped, Joanna put out a video called, you know, copying Emma Chamberlain's clothing line because she was the first one. Everyone is using Emma Chamberlain in the title or unboxing her clothing line, but no one is copying it. So if you are able to either be the first one or add your own spin on it, that's the only way you can beat everyone else. So I guess that's the first thing, you know, using the right titles. I actually went to like Vid Summit. I went to many meetings with people that work at YouTube and it's the same thing. Search volume, competition. If you can really understand that, you will be able to really apply that to your videos. If you're curious, ask yourself, what are people in my audience searching right now? And is there a lot of competition? If you know your answers, I would make a video about it. Once you do that, you're able to make content that's searchable and visible. So now we're gonna dive into step two. Engagement. Like, do you ever go to school and you you're, you know these bitches at school that like post a selfie and you comment something to hype them up like, OMG, you look so pretty. And they don't respond. Like, they think they're just shit. I think it's frustrating as well if a creator does the same thing. I think being a YouTuber has so much to do by building a relationship with your audience. If you think you're just shit to not respond to your comments or at least notice them or say thank you or at least a fucking emoji you're a piece of shit and i understand once you get to a point where you're super big and scaling out you know you can't message everyone but like i just few people right and i look and joanna's sitting there you know replying hearting comments being super engaged and that's something you we should all do as creators we always have to understand that this is really a friendship which leads me to the point where if you're able to you know once you get step one which is competition and keywords and you are able to get someone's attention and retain it that's how you get people to subscribe the subscribe doesn't happen because you get lots of views the subscribe happens because you're able to show people you fucking care okay guys so we're about to dive in the most important
important technique that Joanna did to grow her channel to a million subscribers. Now this for me is the most important because the last two I've said so many times in my channel. You know, like keyword competition, we get it. Like Jade, you're supposed to use words that pop. I mean, you always know this, like follow the trends and you'll be cool. Even if you follow step one and two, a lot of you guys are doing that right now and you're like, hey Jade, I'm still not blowing up. Now here is where everything aligns. If you're someone who's a YouTuber or just a follower of Joanna and you're curious to know what happened, I literally went into like scientist mode. I was researching everything, looking at graphs, data, and this is what I found. But before I share the most crucial part of today's video, my parents are freaking wanting me to get lunch with them and I thought I'd take you along. Don't you just hate it when your parents go interrupt you to get some food? I swear in a few minutes we're gonna jump right back into this value. There's so much value right now. I literally have a notepad so don't click off. I'd be really sad if you didn't watch the end of the video. So we're gonna get some food. Okay, so we got my floofy jacket. Wow, I'm so Emma Chamberlain. Comment below, I'm copying Emma Chamberlain. This dude! You guys see it all the time, way too much. Just stop charging you, dude. You're gonna start charging me to for you, I, you pay me. Exposure. We'll split this, we'll split this AdSense. A lot of you guys are curious to know like why I'm not in school, like that whole story because I mean, my parents didn't allow me to drop out of school and I know you guys are curious to know more about it. So I will make a whole video about it. Just let me know if you're curious. Um, basically, actually a year ago, I left high school. I was a junior and I wanted to pursue YouTube full time. So if you guys want to just see like a whole video about that. I'm gonna tell you the truth. What do you mean the true story? The, the real one. The what one do you mean the real one? Embellish. I did not embellish my stories. I'm gonna try to tell you my side of story. Oh, okay. Yeah. My dad's gonna share his side of the story. When I let you go, I actually have a plan, Jay. Boring. Boring. Comment below, turn on post notifications so you know when I upload that video. I'm about to expose myself. So we are at my dad's favorite Thai restaurant, Thai Terrace. If you are ever in like Washington, if you live in this area, go check it out. It's so good. All right, guys. So we got the spicy basil chicken and we got rice. As you can tell, we're so Asian and we are here eating Thai food. My dad's told my dad to get like super hungry and almost turn angry. Like we call it hangry. I'm gonna expose you. Don't, don't spread the rumors, Jay. <laughs> that was our amazing lunch worth all that extra effort to stop filming and now we're gonna go back home to finish the rest of the video all right guys so we're back and we're about to tell you something that's gonna really crack the code on how youtubers blow up now in my research there's something called product life cycle so with that being said i'm about to explain to you the life cycle of a youtuber now it comes in really three stages now these three stages don't even apply for a youtuber it applies for any company today we're going to take apple we all know apple is one of the legendary companies in branding and sales so in order to understand the life cycle of a youtuber i want to show you guys the life cycle of a company now going to my handy dandy sheet as you can see there's a spike in sales every single year if you can kind of guess these are when the new iphone launches so right when the iphone launches a lot of people pre-order and buy but the moment it becomes less trendy, it decreases. That's why every year in September, we have a new iPhone release because there's anticipation based on that September launch date and no other competitors are gonna launch in September because everyone knows Apple's gonna crush them in sales. All right, so now that you see the Apple product life cycle, this is why it relates to a YouTube life cycle. Can you even see that? Here, I'll move it now. Imagine this graph, Emma Chamberlain subscriber growth. As you can see, just say she posts a few videos and it keeps growing and growing, but then in summer 2007, shit. But here's the thing, you guys. In summer 2018, Emma launched a clothing line that brought a lot of controversy. She basically didn't attach any photos of the products you're gonna buy by blurring them out. So that was really sketchy and a lot of people made videos backlashing the clothing line. So with that, as Emma Chamberlain's growth stabilized, it kinda looks like this. And when Joanna uploaded was when it was going down. So Joanna uploaded the video right here right when there was a little controversy during the clothing line. By the way, everything here is rounded. I didn't really like calculate it by the hour, but as you can tell, timing took a huge part in upload. As I saw before, the first point I mentioned in regards to selecting keywords is all about timing. For example, one of my videos is called How to Grow on Instagram in 2018, but I made the video in 2017. One of the books I actually read called 22 Laws of Marketing, I'll link it below if you wanna check it out, basically says, if you can't be first in an industry, you gotta find a way to make yourself different. 
So if you can't be the first person to make vlogs, you have to find a way to be different. And so for example, if you're going to use a high popular keyword, make sure you're the first one. So Joanna was the first one really copying the clothing line since they just came out. So that's why as everyone else started doing unboxing videos of her clothing line, you know, she was the first one. So that was the reason why the video blew up the fastest because the YouTube algorithm always loves prioritizing videos that are the first. It's just like in any market share, you gotta be the first to win. The life cycle of a YouTuber is very simple. You start, you scale, and then you stabilize. Now, if you're able to catch at the right time and upload on a keyword that's just about to blow up, but you're just hitting the right timing, that's gonna help you get your first viral video. So you guys, what does this mean for you? The people that grow on YouTube focus on one thing that's not about the views. I'm telling you, if you focus on how to like get the right keyword at the right time, you will not grow. The reason why is because you anticipate what is the right keyword, not by looking up some random shit and copying everyone else, literally by knowing your audience, asking people, how can I help you? What content do you wanna see? And knowing, not because it's gonna be for you, but you're gonna help an audience, you're gonna give value by entertaining them. I guess what I'm trying to say is when I hit my first 1 million views on YouTube, it wasn't because I was like strategizing like this graph shit. I mean, you see me as super technical, but I wasn't like that at all. All I was thinking is about the audience, the consumer, you know, you guys, like, what do you want to see? And anticipating that rather than what can get me the most views. There's a huge difference, and I know most of you won't understand it. Well, please trust me, try to think about the people that care about you, not about yourself, and you will always grow on social media. It's just a rule of thumb. Give value, and then they will reciprocate. All right, guys, so that was today's video. If you liked it, make sure you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe, okay? I'm about to make so many more videos about how I dropped out of school, how I pursued social media full-time, and more videos just like how I blew up. So if you liked it, comment, and shout out to the comment winner. Shout out to the comment winner. Comment on this post to be featured in the next episode. If you want to be the next comment winner, go comment below your thoughts. I don't know if you like this video. I know technically it's not the most trendy. I mean, Joanna has been here for, for a few weeks, so I hope you enjoyed. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Goodbye.